Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Breaking news, Tobias Elwood has apparently now deleted the now infamous pro-Taliban video which he posted that caused all the problems as a result of me telling him to delete it. So there you go. Uh, feminist author Caitlin Moran made headlines last week by blasting Dr Jordan Peterson, telling GQ that she fears that any man in a crisis turning to him. The fact is that many men in a crisis do turn to him and to others with similar messages. In a culture that seems beset by anxiety problems and epidemic of trauma, the simple message of discipline has found massive resonance, but blaming mental health seems to be a fig leaf for all manner of celebrity sins. So are we living through a mental health crisis or are we living through a crisis of not having mental strength? Joining me now is rapper and podcaster Zuby and the author and broadcaster Jenny Cleveland. Right, well, welcome to both of you. Zuby, you've been very strong about this. You said a lot of uh, tough stuff. Tough, no, I would call it tough love. I think it mm -hmm. comes from a place of wanting to help people. But you think that there's basically a lot of people who use mental health perhaps in a way that it used to be stigmatized now in a way as a sort of in a glorifying manner yeah i think it's pretty nuanced i think that there is genuinely a decline in overall mental health and mental well-being especially amongst younger people and we could get into the reasons mm. for that at the same time there is also an element of trendiness that is going on with it in certain factions on the opposite end and then i think on top of it as well it's become Huh, what's the best way to put this? Um, I think there is also that, yes, there is an absence of resilience in that people are not being as well prepared for the world, perhaps, as they should be. And I think another thing that's going on is this sort of pathologizing of the human condition, I call mm. it, which is calling sadness depression, calling a pain or a heartbreak mm. trauma, um, calling just sort of using this therapy language, all of a sudden you have teenagers who are claiming they have PTSD and everyone's got trauma and anxiety and depression. And I think these words are being overused. Yeah. And so that's I, another factor. I have a lot of agreement with a lot of that. Uh, Jenny, I, I think the problem is that people I think who have got real mental illness, because people talk about mental health, and I find that weird. It's like, well, mental health, if you're healthy, aren't you? Um, mental illness means you're sick and need attention and help. You know, clinical depression is a very serious thing and so on. But I do, I've seen a real trend in a lot of famous people who seem, some of them seem to have endless things wrong with them, which then become front page news or books or whatever it may be. And I, I, the cynic in me says, really? You're all suffering from all these things from your mansions? Well, maybe they are suffering from it. And maybe, maybe in the past, people felt that they couldn't talk about it. And I think I think the destigmatizing of these kinds of problems is a good thing. It is still the case that, um, you know, suicide is the leading cause of death of men under 50. Um, and it is a good thing that we are getting better at telling people there's nothing to be ashamed about mm. if you if you have these problems. I'd agree, though, that um, I do think we, we have a problem where we are not encouraging people to be resilient. Some of the most rewarding things I've done in my life have been daunting, have been tough, where I've had to put myself out of my comfort zone. And I do think we need to encourage people to, to well, feel... Well, I think there's a disconnect zone. between... Like, if you take sport, professional <clears throat> sport, right, they, people are conditioned to be incredibly mentally mm. strong, resilient, tough. I don't know why we don't transport that to regular life, get into schools with tough people going in there and, and trying to teach people mental strength and resilience. They're, they're actual things that you can be taught. You can be taught to be tougher and stuff. But if you talk in this language, I'll immediately have people reacting now on Twitter, right? You're disgusting. You're inhuman. No, I'm not. I've brought up four kids. I've had lots of intense conversations with them from time to time about very difficult times in their lives and tried to help them through it. I'm a good listener, I think. I encourage people to talk. All that is, is fine. But I also detect a generational issue mm. of young people who just don't seem as equipped to deal with normal life. And I think, Zuby, that a lot of what you're saying, it may sound like tough stuff. It's sort of tough love in a way. We want mm -hmm. people to be better. I don't think they're being equipped to come out of school, perhaps, and have the skill set for life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, the truth is that the world is difficult. Life is hard. At a minimum, every single person we know and love, including ourselves, we're all going to die. We're all going to experience... We all have a terminal illness. Sickness, yeah. right? We're all going to experience tragedy. And that's just the way of the world. You're also going to come across people you disagree with. You're going to hear things you don't like. You're go people are going to be nasty to you and harsh mm -hmm. and so on. And sure, we shouldn't go around being nasty and harsh towards one another. But you also have to recognize, if you're, going, if you're a teenager, if you're a young adult, if you're going to exist in the world with the 8 billion people mm -hmm. in it and all its mm -hmm. complexities, 
you have to be strong and resilient. I, I totally know. agree. And the thing is, people can mock people like Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate. Let's put aside the court case. We'll see what happens with that. But when I interviewed him, I did uh, say afterwards, I found myself agreeing with a lot of what he was saying. You may not like the way he says it, and some of it is unacceptable, mm -hmm. but we've got a clip of one of the things he said, for example. Do you believe depression is a real thing? I believe that feeling depressed is real. I don't believe depression as a clinical disease is real, no. A lot of people who are clinically depressed are suffering with something in their life, and if you fix the problem in their life, perhaps they won't feel depressed anymore. No, but, That's not a disease. No, but Andrew, That's situational. What, Andrew, you're simply wrong. If you think you are single-handedly curing people of clinical depression, you are living in cloud cuckoo land. So that's one of the issues I had with him, was I think he goes too far with that. I think clinical depression is a very real sickness that needs proper treatment. But there are other parts of that interview where he talked, you know, and, and the reason that young men in particular gravitate mm. to the likes of Tate and Jordan Peterson and others, and they're different characters um, with different skill sets, but they, the, these guys do try and give them a message of empowering them to feel yes. stronger about life. Is that wrong? I mean, I you know, masculinity is now... Everything masculine is now toxic, apparently. I, I think, think the, that's very damaging. The problem with that approach, though, is it gives the impression that these issues are easy to solve if you uh, man up and, and pull your socks up, and that if you can't solve these problems by you know, getting out of bed, making your bed yeah. and, you know, exercising, then um, you you have failed and you are weak. And it could be incredibly damaging for someone who's in real crisis, who's hearing that the solutions are simple, what I'm feeling isn't real, I need to just go and do this. But actually, there's a great speech by Admiral McRaven, the great uh, US Navy SEAL commander, and he does the making your bed speech. He did it at a commencement thing where he talked about if you just get up in the morning, whatever your problems are, mm -hmm. and you make your bed and you make it well, it's a great start to a day. Yeah. And it's a great speech. I recommend people go and watch it because I do think it's doing the basic stuff in life, bringing a bit of discipline and order but to your life. But if you're in real crisis... No, no, I'm not talking yeah. about people who have a genuine mental illness. Mm. I'm talking about the vast swathes of people who just mm. seem to find life difficult now. And exactly this is why it's important for people to use words correctly. Yeah. Right? I was talking before about what I call label inflation. If yeah. you're just feeling sad and you say that you're depressed and you have depression, if you're a little bit worried and concerned about things and you're saying that you have anxiety... Or you PTSD, go PTSD right? and so on, you're, yeah. you're diluting these terms. So now it becomes more difficult to separate someone who's just feeling sad because their life is not going well and they don't have certain things in order versus someone who genuinely has I agree. immense... We've got to leave it there, sadly. It's, a, it's an interesting debate. It won't go away. We'll have it again in more depth, but it's an interesting debate. I just want young people to feel a bit more resilient and strong because they'll enjoy their lives more. Mm -hmm. And I think social media has a lot to do with why they don't. And that's another part of this, which we didn't get into. Great to see you both. Zuby and I had a good old bust up on Twitter earlier about COVID. <laughs> Haven't got time for that tonight, but we will another time, Zuby. I'm coming for you. Okay, don't worry, I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, good to see you.